Hi, I'm Felix and today I'm going to show you how to set up WordPress from scratch in five easy steps. So the first thing we need is web space because WordPress consists of two parts. One is the file system itself and all the images and videos and music and everything you have on your website. And the other thing is the database, which contains the configuration of WordPress itself, as well as all the text based content of your website. You can get web space for free and you can pay a few cents or dollars for it, depending on the service. I would recommend you go with the paid services because they have much better performance and you don't have to show advertising banners on your website. The standard installation of WordPress is very small. So when you start with 50 megabytes or maybe 100, that should be more than enough. All right, so as mentioned before, the first thing you need to do is find web space that meets the requirements of WordPress. Usually it's PHP and at least one free MySQL database. The requirements for the latest WordPress version can always be found on the WordPress website or you simply have a search at Google. The second thing we need to do is download WordPress itself. To do that, we go on the WordPress website, which is wordpress.org, and then click on the Get WordPress button. WordPress is free to use. You can download WordPress in a lot of languages. By default, it's English, but it's probably also available in your native language. To download it, simply click on Download WordPress. Perfect, so we're almost halfway done. The third thing is to create the database. This might be a little bit intimidating, but in fact, it's quite easy. Depending on which web space provider you have, the process to do so is different. My web space provider offers me something called cPanel, which is the administration panel of my web space. I'm now logged into my administration panel, which is cPanel, and I have clicked on the database with that, which helps me to create a new database. We now have three easy steps. First thing is we need to create the database itself. So first step is to give it a name. The second step is to create the user credentials to connect WordPress to this database. For security reasons, I would use a very strong password because anybody who has these credentials can destroy your website. First, we create the username to connect to the database. I usually use the password generator because it creates cryptic passwords easily for me. It is important that you save these credentials because otherwise you can't continue with the installation. And we're done. We click on create user. The third step is to provide privileges for this database user. What we want is to give it all privileges. That's it. Now a new database is created. We have created the database user for it and we stated it a password. The fourth step is to upload the downloaded WordPress files to our web space. There are two ways you can do that. One way is to upload the zip file and then unzip it on the server. But to do so, you probably have to use the file manager of your hosting provider. As not all hosting providers have such a file manager, I'm doing it with an FTP program. So first thing is I unzip the downloaded WordPress file. Next is I open the FTP application of my choice. In my case, I use Transmit, but you can also use free applications like FileZilla or CyberDuck. Then we connect to the server or our web space and upload all the files we have just unzipped.
Perfect. This brings us to the last and fifth step of our tutorial, which is the setup of the WordPress system itself. To do so, we browse to the domain that comes with our web space. When you open it, it gives you a selection of languages. By default, it's English. Click on Continue, click on Go, and enter the credentials of the database we set up earlier. I would recommend to leave the table prefix because I encountered a lot of issues when we change it. Of course, for security reasons, it's good to change it. On this page, you enter personal information. First, enter the site name. The site name is the title of your website. You can change it anytime later when you can log into your WordPress system. So for right now, let's call it Tech and Travel. The next one is the default username to log into the system and change all the content you want. I would strongly recommend not to use usernames like admin or administrator because when someone tries to hack your website, that's probably the first thing he tries. So for me, I call it Traveler. You can use the generated password or enter a password of your choice. As that user that we create here has administrator privileges, who is able to change write anything on our website, I would strongly recommend to use a crypted password and save it in a password manager or wherever you want. Last but not least, we have to enter an email address that is the default email address of the administrator and is connected to this user. You can change that email address later again. When you're still building up your website, you maybe don't want that Google or other search engines start indicating your website because maybe you just use test or dummy texts. For that reason, I usually tip this checkbox here so Google does not start to index my website until I untick it later when my website is launched. All right, we are done. We have created the WordPress system and a user. Now we can start login. Perfect. That's the end of our tutorial. You have successfully installed WordPress and you can start using it. As a little side note, your WordPress website consists of two parts. One is the back end or some call it dashboard. That's the part that only logged in users can access and where you can change all the settings and the content of your website. The other part is called front end. Front end is that part of your website that everybody can see. When you want to enter the back end, you simply open your default website and then add WP admin. Then you can log in with your user credentials. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. And if you liked that tutorial, I would appreciate if you click the subscribe button down below.